Well, for today's installment, we're going to do something different. Pete's going to talk to you about a couple of films that really suck, just like this vacuum cleaner. Um, <laughs> of course, my dogs have to come in here now and bug me, but anyway, that goes with the territory. 1973's Blackenstein. Well, you figured after Blackula, it was inevitable, but nobody could figure out how bad this thing would be. See, with Blackula and Scream, Blackula, Scream, you had William Marshall as Blackula. You also had Pam Greer. You also had great production values. You also had a competent script. But with Blackenstein, you get neither. Um, there's an interesting thing on this Everett thing, uh, basically, that um, this guy, uh, I guess um, his name was Frank R. Seletri was some kind of um, mobbed-up lawyer who decided to write this film and have one of his clients who wanted to get into acting, John Hart, play the monster. Well, sadly what this film is lacking is probably acting lessons. Um, Kenneth Strickfadden came in with all this old equipment from the original Frankenstein and put it in his room, which looks like a fucking bargain basement. Um, basically, it's this... Um, a uh, female doctor whose boyfriend, Eddie, had all his limbs blown off in the Vietnam War. But when they bring him in to uh, be checked out, you can basically see his feet. Um, he's abused by this white orderly who rags on him for basically serving his country and said, I wanted to go, but I got a bad heart, and basically tells him how useless he is, which, of course, we know there's going to be a revenge thing later on. So, anyway... There's a, an assistant for this Dr. Stein who looks like some kind of ex-porn actor or something like that with a really weird mustache. But anyway, his name is Malcolm. He sounds a lot like Lurch. He's sort of like the Black Lurch. Well, he sort of gets a crush on the lady doctor, but she says, you know, my heart belongs to Eddie. So he basically injects Eddie with some stuff that's going to turn him into a raging monster. Um, he walks like the old Frankenstein monster. It seems that his victims cannot escape him because he walks like this. And for whatever reason, the camera pans down to his feet, which shows these 70s-style Florsheim shoes. Maybe they were a sponsor. I don't know. But anyway, this monster, of course, the first guy he kills is the orderly who abused him, and they do this. Basically, he walks to the hospital. Nobody sees this guy walking out of the clinic and back to the VA hospital. Nobody sees him. So he walks into the hospital and corners the orderly and beats him to death behind a curtain. You only see his shadows and an obviously fake arm is written off, ripped off. And then a hunk of meat's glued onto the fake arm and then you get to see that. Herschel Gordon Lewis would piss all over this film, but it gets even worse. Um, he finds Liz Renee, of all people, um, former mole to mobster Mickey Cohen, which makes sense because... Obviously, the mob was involved in this stupid-ass movie. And she's in bed with her lover who goes out to hear some kind of disturbance and gets killed by the monster. And then she goes out in her nightie, which basically, you know, you don't see any nudity. The matter of fact, the only nudity you see is when he kills this chick uh, who basically backs up against the fence 20 feet away from monster and doesn't run away. And then, of course, he tears her chest open and they put a piece of bloody latex on it, too. Um... It gets worse, then Liz gets killed, and she gets disemboweled, and I think for the fake intestines, they use those balloons they used to make animal characters out of. I mean, it gets worse and worse and worse. Like I said, this guy is staggering around like, you know, you know the original Night of the Living Dead characters, where you basically you could outrun this guy, but it seems like his victims can't outrun him. So... <laughs> And eventually, he's torn to pieces by a Doberman Pinscher or something at the end of a junkyard or some kind of weird thing like that. And I have very vague memories of seeing this in an actual theater with a mixed crowd. And basically, it didn't matter if you were black or white. You basically shit all over this movie because the movie completely sucks. It wouldn't steer you wrong. And I don't know what, what the, the deal is with this, but... You can either watch the 78-minute uh, version, the theatrical version, or you can see the extended video version for 87 minutes. Well, I revisited the short version because that's 78 minutes of my life that I'll never get back. So that's one movie that sucks. Uh, another one that got a bunch of ballyhoo is Invaders of the Lost Gold, um, which you get this nifty, on-too-tight, 
friggin' slipcover. I mean, come on, you're putting a condom on a DVD for crying out loud. I mean, what is the purpose of this stupid thing anyway? It probably costs pennies to make and raises the price of the Blu-ray 10 bucks. So, do you do like this? Do you get like, you know, slipcover vision when you watch the movie? Should you view it through this to get the letterbox effect? Or should you slip it over your bad thing and just sit there and be cool with it? Well, anyway, there's a little bit of backstory to like whatever I do here. And Raiders of the Lost Gold was released as da, 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 Horror Safari and a couple other different titles. Um, another one shot in the Philippines. Uh, Dick Randell was the producer. Dick was one of those guys that ran all around the Pacific Rim and picked up films from the Philippines, Jakarta, Indonesia, places like that, and distributed them, like Crocodile and some Kung Fu stuff. So the premise of this whole thing is it's Japanese gold stolen, and it has a wild cast here. Let's see who we got. We got Stuart Whitman, who became no stranger to these weird-ass films. Woody Strode, Harold Objob Sakata, and Laura Germser. Uh, Gemser, rather. Um, don't expect too much from Laura because she has a really crappy haircut. She only gets naked for five minutes, then dies. Um, basically, it's you know a, Jap a bunch of Japanese soldiers, officers hid the gold. The only officer surviving is I got to look at the stupid thing again. They don't even give his name, but it's Harold Objob Sakata playing you know the officer. Strange thing about it is there's a fight between Woody Strode and Harold, and basically the two of them were professional wrestlers back in the 50s. Woody actually worked with and was friends with Gorgeous George. And um, Harold's name was, he was a Japanese heel to, called Tosh Tago. So the two of them have a really bad, badly choreographed fist fight, which is basically just these two old-timers having fun. So, honestly, this film is so friggin' bad that even Vic Diaz couldn't save it, couldn't uplift it from its uh, rotten roots. I mean, there was some good stuff shot in the Filipinos, and a lot of bad stuff was shot in the Philippines. And this is one of them. Um, honestly, I don't know why, you know, this was bad, as bad as it was um, on, uh, you know, basically direct-to-video and things like that, but... Uh, I mean, really, some of this stuff, you know, it's not a lost classic. It's a classic that should have stayed lost, um, unfortunately. You know, I mean, I know some of these uh, DVD companies are basically, uh, you know, trying to scrape the bottom of the barrel to get stuff to put out. But, you know, 20-something bucks for this? No, it wasn't worth it. Sorry, I'm maybe shitting on the company or something like that. But, you know, this seems to be the whole thing. And again, with this, you know, the stupid slipcover thing, I don't get it. it it's like... People are going crazy over this stuff, and it really doesn't do anything, you know, makes the DVD stick in the slipcover. You just saw me trying to get it out. It's like putting a condom on a DVD. So, um, there you go. Those are two really movies that sucked. Sucked big time, but, hey, don't take my word for it. Go see them. What the hell? You know, waste a couple, you know, 90 minutes or so of your life to see uh, some really bad shit. I mean, you can really have fun ranking on them and things like that, but they're really bad. So, uh... That's our episode for today, so thanks for tuning in, thanks for subscribing, above all, stay safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.